Welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube. If you're watching this video later on over there for the beginning of another 12 hour stream tonight, we hit another uh, referral goal a little bit ago, this time with MeUndies. We had one earlier in the week with Harry's and we've had 10 people place an order through the referral link, get 15% off of their order. And so we are here doing another 12 hour stream to celebrate that. So I really do appreciate when y'all help support me by supporting my sponsors. And of course, I, I really appreciate this, the sponsors uh, helping me out too. And so uh, for, for to show my appreciation, I'm gonna go ahead and stream more. So it turns out it's been an entire week since we played Quasi Dupla Ooze. The last time we played it was the first day, uh, was last Thursday. Uh, the first day that the new, uh, or I guess it was maybe last Wednesday that these 3D cards were out that first day. And so uh, we haven't played it in a while. So let's go ahead and play it again. We've had just lots of success with this deck. This is one of my favorite decks to play and these days. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can get another five wins. Yeah, see if we can get to that final boss. And here we go. Quasi Dupla Ooze. Yeah, so it was it was whenever Ravnica Allegiance came out that they updated the uh, like the the deck screen and that's whenever you couldn't you couldn't update your basic lands anymore and so basically ever since Ravnica Allegiance came out that's how long it's been since we've been able to choose basic lands because before that you could choose basic lands this is our first time using the Simic sleeves We're not playing any games, we're telling our opponent. Hey, we're a Simic deck. And we got the Simic sleeves, the Simic avatar. So, our opponent has mana creature turn one, turn two, so they'll have five mana on turn three for like a Vivian potentially. We had mana creature on turn one, turn two, so we'd have five mana for a Vivian potentially on turn three. They should have taken the quasi duplicate. The Elf Crab Warrior. So I know it's technically better to play the island there. I like not letting my opponent know that I drew an island. Yep, Snow Patrol. Take back the city. All right, so next turn, um, I like seeing no finality here. So next turn, we'll be able to copy the Biogenicus, and then at least this Biogenicus would not die to a finality. Ooh. Or I could just play Vivian. No, we're I'm gonna wait a turn to play Vivian. I think this is better. Because if I play the Vivian, then I have like 4-4 four, four ooze and 4-4 four, four ooze. Like I have to block like the Growth Chamber Guardian with a 4-4. Four, four. And then again, if they have a finality, my whole board gets wrecked. Yeah, the, the quasi is safer where we can have some more defense for Vivian next turn. We don't have the mana. Like, we're only going to have access to potentially seven mana next turn, so we're not going to be able to quasi duplicate and Vivian next turn. We'll have to make a choice. And we're 
expecting these biogenic users to take over now. So, why leave two mana like that available for cast down? That's got to be for cast down, right? Like, I target something with biogenic or with quasi duplicate, and they, they cast down the thing I target. Maybe they were hoping to draw into cast down, but they didn't get it. Picked up their cards. So I think all I do in this matchup is bring in the entrancing melodies, cut two druid, and cut one duplicate. Yeah. Because of the instant speed removal. Question is, why do I say they for the opponent? Because I don't... I mean, I think it's just the best word to say. Saying he... Doesn't make a ton of sense because our opponent may not be male. Just don't know. I think there are a lot of people that say he for the opponent. That's not always accurate. Yeah, so we have to pay two life here to pay to play the breeding pool instead of the forest. But I think it's going to be worth it over time. You know, next turn, if I'm going to want a Hadana's Climb, we're going to need that blue source anyway. And then this does give me the opportunity to have Entrancing Melody for one, even though that's not very likely for the following turn. Hmm. I have a question. I keep seeing you cutting duplicates against a lot of decks. What matches would you keep for duplicate in? Um, not exactly sure. Thing is, duplicate is the kind of card that's a lot better game one than game two or three. Game two and three, opponents have a lot more interaction. You know, like with removal and stuff like that in their deck. It's a better game one card. That's not really a surprise factor. It's just it's a it's a good card. It's a powerful card. But it's it's at its best game one. And it it is a really good card. It's a card that we want to be drawing, but Just not as good. Post board. And also we need we need more interaction for our, our opponent usually. Post board we want to be tuning our deck to be the best it can be against our opponent. And that's a place to to shave. So I'm going to cast the Branch Walker off of the Land of War Elf here so we have the opportunity to play the Simic Gilgate and get that out of our hands. Wildgrowth Walker is a tough one. I'm going to keep it even though it doesn't do anything right now. But it makes future Explore creatures very, very good draws. So 
So they played... Uh, oh yeah, they had to play land first for light up the stage there. The big question is if I'm going to just play the Wild Growth Walker out right now and let it die to a removal spell. I think so, because even with it dying to a removal spell, we have such good uh, turns the next couple turns. And yeah, if it eats like a Lightning Strike, that's like one less Lightning Strike for Biogenicus next turn. Because next turn, Biogenicus at 5 mana. The following turn, Krasis at 6 mana, being a 4-4. Four, four. Divination Krasis. That's just two very solid turns for us. And yeah, I really like taking basically our opponent's whole turn just to kill the... Just to kill the Wild Growth Walker. Our opponent's going to need something special to come back here. It's not a bad start. But something like Frenzy is what they'll need. After we make them waste all those cards, it's just gain two, draw two. And now a 4-4. Four, four. Opponents already had to use a lot of good removal. Ooh, Judith. Okay. Judith is, is definitely for real. It's definitely for real. I don't think Judith's going to be enough on her own, though. <laughs> yep, glad King Tull's in here. Question is, would you consider splashing black for find finality in the 75? Well, find finality is very good. I think it kind of takes the same spot that quasi du the quasi duplicate does in the deck. Splashing is not as it's not you know it's not free to splash. It's not hard. To splash either, but it's not free. I know I'm not flipping the. I could flip the climb by targeting the Hydro Crisis, but I want to get Wild Growth Walker. Um, I want to make it more difficult for Wild Growth Walker to to die there. I would have manually tapped the two forests and left I could I could still have one island up here and then I would be able to flip the Hadana's climb after combat quasi duplicate again. But I, I think we're doing I think we're doing okay though. I think we're gonna be fine. Alright, twenty nine. So basically, I guess what I'm saying is I, I don't think that fine finality is a necessity in the 75.
because my mana is kind of tough with having Jade Light wanting double green on, on three and Quasi Duplicate wanting double blue on three. And especially how, like, even on six mana, you, you really want four blue sources on turn six so you can play Quasi Duplicate and, you know, both play the first copy and the Jumpstarter copy. It's really nice to have six blue sources. So the mana is, you know, pretty stretched here in the deck. So I've got the Gilgate. We even have the Frilled Mystic over here. So I'm going to keep the dive downs. I'm going to take out Hidana's Climb. And to Vivian. This seems like a pretty decent quasi-duplicate matchup. We just want to copy our Wild Growth Walkers and explore creatures a bunch, basically. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, good good questions. You know, like, I always like, I'm always happy to field good questions and everything. Okay, thanks, King Phil. Have a nice dinner. I'm pretty sad that Incubation Druid did not get a 3D card either. I'm a little surprised that Growth Chamber Guardian did, but Incubation Druid did not. So it looks like our opponent's going to be playing Bedevil next turn. I would rather have Branch Walker get Bedeviled than Incubation Druid. They could go after Land War Elf here, though. Now the Druid blocks the Footlight Fiend very, very conveniently. Of course, I do not want to see a Judith, because then it does not block Footlight Fiend anymore. But really, we just want to draw this land. We want to be able to Biogenic Ooze next turn. That's the most... That's the best thing we can have for next turn. Very good. Very good. surprised the opponent didn't attack at all. I guess they would have traded two creatures for like my ooze token, but so we are one mana away from casting the double quasi duplicate, so let's just hmm. I, mean, I guess I'm keeping that, but it's not like the best thing ever right now. I got my opponent and I locked in an infinite combo with three hostage takers. <laughs> I ended up conceding because it was my fault for us getting there. Whoops. Yeah, hostage taker is a pretty silly card. All right, so. But yeah, the, there's just no way to 
Like, if both people are stubborn and don't want to concede, there's no way to stop the game. Or anything. There's not... They, they need to just have, you know, anything that can possibly make those kind of scenarios happen. Like, that just can't be printed, basically. They need to make it, at least make Hostage Taker like a May, so you can choose, no, I don't want to keep doing this. You know, like this weird loop or something. You know, like, there's got to be, like, that's just a, it's just a, a mistake in printing. So, problem here is... We are facing... Looks like we're facing Wilderness Reclamation. Hands not spectacular. Spectacular. Definitely like drawing the Vivian to be able to destroy a Reclamation this turn, but... Okay. Let's see, we'll see if they have a counter spell. I hope they don't. Alright, good. No counter spell and we can destroy Ascanta. How this thing go No one said restoration was painless. Oh, yeah, I guess because if, if you don't target anything, don't you pass your turn at some point because of the tar timer? But I think it just automatically targets at that point, I believe. The wilds are my shield. So while... While Biogenic Ooze would be a good card to play... I think I need to make my Hydroid Crisis be able to tussle with their Hydroid Crisis to be able to protect my Vivian. What else we got? Come to me. Ugh. So do I want to uh, Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to take that thing. Alright, Biogenic Ooze. <laughs> no, I Iconic Last? No, that is not a correct assumption. So now I'm not able to protect my Hydrocrasis or have the Hydrocrasis be able to be bigger than theirs. But I want to be able to have like lethal attacks from like the rest of the game now. Please, no Nexus.
Just pass the turn back to us. You can do it. Got nothing else better to do over there. Oh no, a second reclamation. That's so much mana. Our opponent's deck is Simic Nexus. Or yeah, Nexus Reclamation. Yeah, that could be a name as well. Please don't find it, don't find it. Don't find Nexus. Don't do it. No, no, no Nexus, no Nexus. Pass turn. Whew, all right, no Nexus. Now we can destroy the Escanta. All right, so now the the game is: Do they have root snare? Say so it's likely they have root snare. Okay, now we do not have, we did not find another Vivian yet. This amount of mana is ridiculous. Okay, well now, now Ascanta gets to flip, and that's game. Ascanta being able to be activated four times a turn, you can't whiff on Nexuses. Alright, so Negates, Crushing Canopies, Frilled Mystics, those all come in. And... So if we take out quasi-duplicate, quasi dive down. Climb, this gets a 62. Two ooze. Do I want like Melody for like their Biogenic Ooze or Krasis? Hey, Taiga. It's only considering playing Melody. They're going to bring in a lot of creatures. The thing is, their creatures are kind of expensive, besides Krasis.
No, I'll just keep it like this. It could be... So the statement here is, they release a Planeswalker with Wolves slash Werewolf synergies, but there is close to no Wolves card types in Standard. It could be that it's a plant for, like, next year's Standard. You know, like, it'll be available with the cards that come out next year, and it's possible that the, the cards that come out next year are going to care about Werewolves and Wolves and stuff like that. It's certainly possible. Don't have any cyborg cards, which I, I don't like that we don't have any cyborg cards right now. And neither of those were cyborg cards. I want, you know, negate, crushing canopy, frilled mystic, all that kind of stuff. Last game we got to destroy the first as Kanta as well. And fire. I just want to see how many cards are in the graveyard, too. I'm doing good today, Thor. Yeah, doing good. I think I'm ready, prepared to have a, a nice long stream day today. Meet my newest friend. And we want to find Frilled Mystics when we're taking up with Vivian. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised we haven't returned to Lorwyn or Alara in this long. It's been over over 10 years now for those two. It's been about about 10 years for Alara around around that. It's probably been like somewhere in like the 9 to 12 year range. I don't know exactly, you know, off the, off the top of my head, that's my guess. So I know Feel the wrath of I don't Scala. have a frilled mystic negate, anything like that to protect myself, but I think it's still just the best thing to do is get rid of the wilderness reclamation, you know, force them to have another. No, we've only been to Kamigawa the one time, but Kamigawa was a pretty big bust the first time. Um Overall, but I think it was just kind of like the the sets weren't very good more than people didn't like Kamigawa
If you can't stop nature. Ah, oh, there's the negate. Graveyard. Just, you know, looking for Frilled Mystic. Still haven't seen one yet. Put a lot of cards at the bottom with Vivian tickups and stuff. We've seen probably about 30 cards so far. Okay, we'll have our Vivian destroy that as long as they don't have Nexus here. Please don't have Nexus. Yeah, these sleeves are really nice. I like these. These are cool. Do they make a cool sound? I can't really hear that one as much. I don't have my sound on too loud while I'm streaming, though. Hey, Noxie. Glad you're having a blast with Anaya Legends. Yeah, that deck's awesome. <laughs> yeah, niv it stuff. Make a gold click clinking sound. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that's only six mana. No... No Nexus. Oh yeah, I know, I, oh yeah, the Orzhov ones make that. Yeah, I knew that, that. No one knows the wilds like I do. There's Frilled Mystic. All right, it looks like we're going to game three. They should have just done that during my upkeep again. But I guess they were worried about me uh, then using Vivian to destroy Reclamation. Okay, they have a pleasing rushing water sound. Like, like running your hand through water. Okay, that's good. You're playing Jeskai Niv this weekend, Rex? Alright, best of luck. Best of luck. Hope you crush it. Alright, we got Canopy. We can, we can keep. It's fun to do. It's fun to see the light up part, even if I don't really hear exactly the, the, the sound. I feel like it's good luck. We don't have nearly as fast a start here being on the draw this time. You remember like last time our opponent was like, like, you know, playing Turn three, they're playing Search Rest Canta. We are already playing Vivian to destroy it. That's what happened the first two games. I don't think keeping Crush and Canopy up here makes a ton of sense. For like the Reclamation. Like I think we need to get more pressure on the battlefield first before we start holding up Crush and Canopy. Obviously, that was like the wor the absolute worst case scenario. Of course, was our opponent having the reclamation and also having the the counter spell for the jade light.
Alright, we got it out of there now. Would love to have Vivian here, but obviously we don't. I don't think the one crisis is really quite enough to have us finish this out over the Biogenicus. So we're playing another one also. Playing the, this 4-4 four four also makes it so like our, my opponent can't really attack this turn. You know, unless they have other things. And then we can have this 7 power in the air where we can uh, back it up with the Frilled Mystics. And obviously we're a mana short from having both Frilled Mystics available, so might as well just put down this Wild Growth Walker as well. Oh, this game's certainly not over yet. Not over yet. They can have, like, you know, Blink of an Eye plus Counterspell. They can have Fog Effects plus Counterspell. We get their crisis countered. Now it looks good for us. Now I say we're looking good. The frilled mystic does look look great, doesn't it? It's just yeah, the full art frilled mystic looks awesome. There we go. Quasi dupla ooze is now. Wait, we're already three and zero. Man, I forgot about the second match. <laughs> Lav on fire with the sub. And that is our deck as well. It is on fire. Thank you so much, Lav. Welcome to the stream. All right, 3-0, our sub battle countdown. Down to eight. Single digits. Hey, Vassin. Yeah, 12 hour stream today. We're an hour in right now. 11 to go. Starting off with a. Starting off very strong with 3 0 here for Quasi Duplicate. Or Quasi Duplicate Ooze. <laughs> Lavin Fire says, I've been following you for half a year or more and never realized that I had Twitch Prime. That's a good lesson for all of you out there that may not realize if you have Twitch Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you make a lot of purchases with Amazon. Just link your Amazon in your Twitch account. It's very easy to do. I've done it myself. And then you get Twitch Prime automatically just by linking those. And then you can get a free subscription to any channel on Twitch. Dive Down wouldn't be the worst here against Esper, but... I certainly want lands, but I want to make sure we get to get to go to Vivian next turn. <laughs> Nobody can beat the ooze. Attack. Alright, we'll just discard this quasi duplicate. Yeah, this would this is a good deck to get for paper. I I'd recommend getting this deck. Yeah, if you go back and watch like our, our last few times of playing this deck, we've been just doing really well with it too. Rude. 
Well, I'm hoping no negate here. Please no negate, please no negate. No negate, no negate, no negate. Ugh, syncopate for one? Ugh. Bleh. Bleh, I say. So I was playing forest there over island or hinterland harbor because of the fact that the forests are revealed. All right, here I'm gonna go ahead and play a blue source though, so we can potentially have four blue sources the next turn, if need be. But not looking good from here. Quasi duplicate and Hidata's climb are gonna be cards that we're gonna be sideboarding out because as you can tell, if our opponents just counter all of our things and kill all of our things, then quasi duplicates and Hidana's climbs don't actually do anything. Yeah, that's true. They did not have negate. I was asking for no negate. Hey, I am glad that the Hadana's climb ain't an absorb. Honestly, I am very happy to trade a Hadana's climb for an absorb. The problem, of course, is now our opponent has flipped Ascanta, and Ascanta is pretty broken. The best of news, though, is our opponent's not hitting land drop, so it's hard to have enough mana to activate and do other things. If they don't have more land drops. So we can draw six. Or draw three. Sorry, Crisis for six, draw three. That's this is a tough game one matchup. I mean these are like we're also drawing like the worst part of our deck. Like Hadana's Climb, Quasi Duplicate, and Wild Growth Walker are the cards I sideboard out. But games two and three are a lot better for us when we get to bring in a bunch of negates and frilled mystics. You know, like that that changes a lot of having access to three negate, three frilled mystic. Okay. So they're going to have to find a Kaya's Wrath. Dang. Or that. Kaya's Wrath, they'll probably just do that last turn. Might as well keep exploring, looking for Vivian. Or Krasis. Vivian and Krasis. Those are the cards we want. We've only seen one Krasis so far, right? They didn't get any other Krasis, did they? No. Ooh, it looks pretty. Okay, we've only seen one Vivian and one Krasis. So we have six six more of those cards. Two more Vivians, three or five more. Two Vivian, three Krasis. Maybe I should play the forest there. Hmm. Interesting. Casting insight instead of just activating the Escanta. I guess I kind of like it. Casting the insight does let them 
give them a better chance of hitting land drops, which is really what they want with Ezcanta. They just want land drops. Oh boy. If I don't play this, they get to activate Ascanta. So I think it's worth it to play it. Sorry I'm late. I'm not ready for this quite yet. Hmm. All right, so they have to kill the thing that's attacking them for lethal, which means that we're able to kill the Teferi. This is hardly my worst. And I guess we you know, didn't quite get there by not playing the Wild Growth Walker. So five, six, seven, eight. So we can draw four. I definitely thought our opponent was just going to have another Kai's Wrath by now, like they'd only seen one, but they were just really not activating their Ascanta and didn't get another Kai's Wrath, which is why I, I wasn't just, I didn't think I needed to play the Wild Growth Walker. It's just a 1-3, it's not like a 1-3 is that valuable. In the, grams, in the grand scheme of things. But of course a 1-3. Could have dealt a little more damage here. <clears throat> so even though it seems like I'm really overextending into a Wrath here, Biogenic Goose is just one card. Wow, they cannot find Wraths. No Wrath in hand? They've only played one Wrath, right? I guess they had they played a cry of the carnarium also though. So maybe they're playing last Kai's Wraths. Alright, we got game one. Kinda of felt like we stole that game. You know, we definitely felt behind for a while, but that's what Krasis does. Krasis, you know, drawing three and just helping us get to um, having better things. I'm gonna bring in the canopies also. Because our opponent could certainly have dived or Thieves Sandy, but they may also have Lyra or destroying Ascanta. It's not like I, I really want to be drawing Crushing Canopy too much. Like I don't want to have like a bunch of them, but I think it's I think it's better than some of these other cards just to have access to. So we'll go with this. Yeah, it's for Thief, Lyra, and Ascanta. Rex says most recent lists are only playing three Cry and two Kai's Wrath with another in the board. That sounds horrible to me. That sounds like a best of one list. Sounds like yeah, that sounds like best of one. To me. But Oh, well, our opponent couldn't find another Kaiser at, so we'll take it. Just like we'll take this hand, Explore Creatures are pretty good. We want our Explore Creatures to be drawing lands. Because whether they're 3 power or 2 power, of course that's a difference, but drawing the extra card is very valuable.
Can't handle the power of these Simic sleeves. Draw land. Good. Even though we don't necessarily need land right now. There we go, and then we draw the spell. That's the order that we want. Oh no, I was considering saving that. No white mana for the opponent. There's white mana. I don't think they're just slamming a Teferi here into our face-up negate. Unfortunately. I'm encounter that though. Like just taking two cards away from him. This isn't a fight you can win. Let's skip to the good part. Three cry, two Kai's Wrath, and that Battle of Wit standard at Spell Hold Games, a 19 player thing. Yeah, absolutely hate it. I would not say that most lists are doing that because of just a local store event. Do you want me to also, phase you out of time? But... So their plan was Cry of the Carnarium, using thought. the dive down on the ooze here does keep that from killing our other ooze. Crushing Canopy. Perfect time for a Crushing Canopy. Nope. Honestly, that's that's just bad by me. I should attack with Branch we Walker and Ooze quickly. at Teferi. I should just they gain five life, but I, I needed to sacrifice one of those to kill Teferi. That was a mistake by me. I just kinda win and pass the turn very quickly and then immediately afterwards. I played too fast there. Hey Flock of Fears. Welcome back. For a half a year? You are amazing. Come on, deck. What are all these lands doing? And they're all blue sources, so we, we're not even going to be able to activate Biogenic Ooze twice. Interesting. Hmm. 
Yeah, now we got green sources. We got enough green pace. sources for use at least. Assume they're gonna find Krasis now because we haven't seen a single Krasis yet. All right, they got took something over two lands. <laughs> Land of War Elf. Well, they cleared out some bad cards for us. Ugh. Yeah, we drew. We we did draw pretty bad this game. That's all right. I definitely like having the definitely like having the crushing canopies in, and I think we're going crowl harpooners also. What would I want to take out for harpooners? Let me take out the dive downs. Take out two dive down for two harpooner. This could certainly be bad if you know if we don't get this to this third land for Jade Light or if our opponent has Thought Erasure for Jade Light. Come on, we just saw so many lands last game. We're really just gonna go this entire this game and not find any lands? Come on. This can't happen. You can do this, Simic Sleeves. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I knew you could do it, Simic Sleeves. So we saw Syncopate from them before, but I don't think I want to play around it. Just hope they don't have it. Which they do. And this is not a good hand against against a Thief of Sanity. Okay, no Thief of Sanity. Our opponent was just going to be mortifying that. Shouldn't they just do that on their own turn? That was their plan. <laughs> I like a good fight. One deck, more lands. Hit the road. I'm not dead yet. Try harder. Okay. Well, just wait till next turn. So even though Frilled Mystic is better here of like getting a Frilled Mystic in play also, Was because I'm no, also scared of Lyra. I'm going with the negate there. Just you wait. And if our opponent's just willing to, to just throw out a Teferi whenever we shocked in, that's certainly telling. Hmm. All right, go. I need to counter that too. All right, hopefully they don't have a, a Lyra.
So of course they're playing Chemistry's Insight here. Our our opponent just played Settle the Wreckage last turn. Or last game. More mana for Krasis. I did like actually attacking them for lethal though, instead of just like attacking them for six, where they could just like have a mortify and only take three kind of thing. So let's go six. So their plan is just to cast the Biogenic Ooze. We get to fly over it. Well, they must have drawn Mortify, especially how it didn't tap the black, white, black, white. They must have just drawn a Mortify or a cast down, whatever. Same thing. That's bad. That was a good draw for them. I mean, I guess I'm supposed to be attacking with this 4 4. I guess I could attack to the last turn. I mean, either way, we're just trading with their ooze token. If I should have just attacked with this last turn, I guess. It doesn't get better for us than trading with their ooze token. Cleansing Nova. So we've seen them play one Kaya's Wrath, one Settle, and now one Cleansing Nova. Not great for us. Still haven't seen a Vivian you know yet. What? Right on schedule. 
be a great great card to finally see here man If we drew a Krasis, we could play Krasis for 15. Hurry. There's three more Krasises in here somewhere. Krasis would just be draw seven. No counter spell. Well, we finally drew a Vivian, but they had the counter spell for it. No time for a break. Unfortunately, last game our opponent killed us with all those flyers. This game we had like the answers to the flyers. But they had the hostage taker for our Biogenicus. Really killed us with them getting like the multiple blockers and everything. It's really crazy. is like the only thing we can be drawing here to get us back in this. Okay, let's tap you, and you, and then 14, let's just draw 7, kept 2 man open in case we'd find like a negate or something, you know, like I wanted to you know, the extra mana, whether it's 14 or 15, isn't a big deal. And obviously they have a bunch of removal spells. So we'll see how, if and or how we can deal with this Teferi. I don't know if we can. We don't have any like bounce spell or anything, so. Now the Teferi ult is the problem. Because we can actually match them on, on cards. Because we Let's even have another draw seven in hand. So we can actually match them on cards. The the problem is Teferi ult. Yeah, I, I tried Incubation Incongruity more whenever Ravnica Legions came out, but I, I really hated the card. Just having the removal spell give my opponent a 3-3 was never good. Hey Tao, yep, not you're not too late for mono black zombies. You got that up next. All right, three and one. It's pretty disappointing to lose both post board games. But we just 
you know, really flooded out both games. And happens. So, new match. Yeah, I like what we got going on here. I like the branch walker on two. Ooh. Even better. Incubation druid on two. Corn says, I found that one copy of Clear the Mind improves yesterday's storm deck by a lot since I end up overdrawing too much with it and eliminates decking. Okay, I could see that. So. I guess. Question is. I don't know. Like, we went through all those and I. you overdraw with it too much like aren't you just winning all the games that like you can't you can't keep yourself from decking kind of thing I don't know like while we were playing that we did draw a lot of cards whenever we were you know having you know playing with thousand year storm and play but I never thought that we were close to actually decking like that didn't seem like a concern because you you know like before you deck you just start casting your burn spells right what what kind of games are you playing where you're where you're decking with the Thousand Year Storm deck? I guess. While I was talking there, I was deciding whether or not to play Biogenic Ooze or just activate the Incubation Druid. With them having the basic island here, they're not going to be able to Kaiser at this turn. Maybe the turn, you know, looking at like the turn after. I don't really have any pressure on the battlefield with just the Wild Growth Walker here. You do have to be cognizant of like your library and you can't just play keep playing card draw spells over and over and over again. But I guess if you are If you are struggling finding burn spells and then you have to cast a, a card draw spell and it would draw all the rest of the cards in your deck. Okay, now we draw the land and we get to Vivian. Hooray! We did it. I've lost so much already. I won't lose more. I didn't want to play Vivian the previous turn because our opponent had the mana up, even though they would need Negate or Disdainful Stroke or Syncopate or any of those. Yeah, fortunately, they had Contempt. And I want to be able to actually use the Quasi Duplicate while we can. Um, because of instant speed removal, quasi duplicate is, you know, it's, it's hard to actually have that card connect in the matchup. Yeah, if incubation could hit lands, but it can't. The crueler the opponent. The sweeter the victory. Yeah, it'd have to be tuned. It'd have to be tuned down. You know, it could be like adventurous impulse of like th looking at three cards and taking a land or a creature, kind of thing. I'm sorry. Was that dear to you?
Lucky hit. Hmm. Do I want to play another Jade Light? We're looking at Krasis for three the following turn. So it'd be a 4 3 Jade Light. We're tied with tied on cards now, four and four. Those having a crisis, them having a Kaya. As long as they don't have to ferry. That's not not to ferry, but that's not not a great one. They get next get more cards now. Um you know, like something that's like a, a continued source of card advantage, like to ferry or as Kanta, it's a lot easier to win. Climb's not lethal. We do 14. Hmm. I'd rather have the climb as like a surprise lethal if that's a thing. Or I'll play it now. Love it. Love it. I will take that eating encounter spell any day. I know my responsibility. We need to move quickly. Yeah, this is where it got bad for us. This turn right here, and yet another Kaiser at the end. Like always, we need more crises. We have not been doing that good at drawing crises. We've been always having one halfway through our library. And yet again, another game, one crisis halfway through our library. Alright, that's their fourth sweeper. Not another crisis. Hold that thought. We need to do a better job at drawing Krasis. Because Krasis and Vivian Things are our two most important I cards. Was I you? 
Now it's dearly departed. Yeah, I guess Incubation would let you look for Krasis more. This this matchup, I would like Incubation for that reason. Overall, I don't want it in the deck. I don't want it against other matchups, but... But yeah, sure, at this... This specific point of the game, when you it's, know you know, turn 14, and we have nothing, I would like to draw an Incubation. Yes. The problem with Incubation, though, is they are likely sitting on counter spells by this point, and so Incubation's the kind of card they can counter, where if we just draw Krasis, it's just... Uncounterable to draw a bunch more cards. You are removed from time itself. Yeah, whatever. Hey, nerd girl. We are. Flooding out against Esper a bunch over here. It's been a sad last three games. Should we go Melody? Do I... Hmm. Thinking about going with Melody over Dive Down. No, let's go Dive... No, let's keep Dive Down. Yeah. I like that we got Jade Light on turn two. I should tap the Llanowar Elf, probably, here. Maybe not. Yeah, B9, I know you're asking for new deck ideas, but I don't... Besides all these that that we've been playing recently, have you like checked out the the stream decker page with all the decks on it? Oh, I can I can attack with that now. I'm not gonna play the Biogenic Ooze. Like, have you kind of gone through here? There's there's so many different decks on my stream decker page. I would have just attacked with that Llanowar off last turn. Would have been presenting a lethal attack. There.
But this is looking really good for us. Yeah. We certainly had a very slow hand and we had the negate. All right, one and one. Let's see if we can get this game three, and move on to the final boss. Let's go with Branch Walker. Get damage out there. I don't think we really need a ooze like you know on on turn three. Um, right away with like the incubation druid there. Now we know our opponent cannot have a wrath this this turn because of the basic island. So we get to just get both of these creatures down, and then we'll be able to untap and have Frilled Mystic negate, activating Incubation Druid, have all of that available. Just making that attack, so now I can spend five mana to activate Druid and then have Druid cast negate. Which is what we're going to do here. Alright, so Frilled Mystic down also. And now we're just attacking for seven. And, you know, have our opponent on three turn clock, wait for them to wrath. Whenever they wrath, then we'll ooze. And that's the plan, unless. We, and maybe we'll draw another counter spell. Or. The Vivian would have been a really good draw there. What you got, opponent? They're just sitting on the three cards. Okay, so they had the, the first wrath. Do they have the second wrath? Incredible with the sub. Welcome to the channel, Incredible. Thank you kindly. The crueler the opponent, the sweeter the victory. Ooh, very good turn for the opponent, being able to exile. All right, our sub battle countdown is down to six. Oh, they did not. I thought they were gonna just exile my token with Kaya. You have to do better than that. Hmm. It only draws one card right now. But I think we still keep it. Come on, play a flyer. Or an enchantment. Hopefully this last card's a flyer or an enchantment. Was that you? Yeah, I don't think our no, opponent realized that the Kaya could have exiled the token.
Well done. Look to see me no more. All right, and we'll wait on the crisis. We already have good pressure here. I can get rid of anything, living or dead. You're not welcome here anymore. Gone for now, but not forever. Hmm. Yeah, let's just be patient. Don't need them to draw another wrath and destroy our whole board. Like we saw game one, they played four wraths against us. Um, you know, including cleansing Nova and three Kaya's wraths. So we, we know that they have plenty of wrath effects. Now I guess our opponent was just playing Kaya to gain two life and to make me attack Kaya is just, you know, if they don't really have anything else going on, they basically get to gain um, they get to gain six life. Alright, they're in the same spot they were last turn. And that'll be a win. All right, we are going on to the final boss. After those rough three games in a row, came back, got the post board games. Can one play limited only by using diamonds? Now you can also do draft with gold. Um, there is, for limited, there is ranked draft and traditional draft. The traditional draft costs gems. The ranked draft, which right now it cycles of what's set. Right now it's core set 2019. You can either use 750 gems or 5,000 gold. So you, you are able to use gold for this and you get um, around, you get between, by just doing all of the daily wins, you get either 1250 or 1500 gold a day. You can use that, you can save that up for doing drafting. All right, final boss time. Time to get into it. Drafting's difficult, uh, especially when you're just starting out with magic. It's difficult. It's it's a it's probably the best way to get better at magic, though. I think uh, playing a lot of limited will certainly make you a lot better at the game overall. have turn two wild growth walker we haven't had that the entire league this is a first for the entire league Reclamation. It's not great for us. Game one, we have a lot of cards that don't interact with our opponent too much. Doesn't really matter, they both have one counter. Putting it on the Wild Growth Walker is a little safer though because they could have 
um, you know, like the shock, uh, Shiv and Fire. They could have Shiv and Fire. They would kill the Branch Walker in response. So they didn't have any lands last turn. So even they got double reclamation, but it doesn't look like they have lands. Which could certainly be bad for us if they have expansion explosion. Because now expansion you know, now they have twelve mana towards expansion explosion. An explosion for eight is a whole lot. what it looks like our opponent's doing here. Well, we will attack for four. And I'll play a 1-1. One, one. Not really use in holding it when we have all sorts of other things to be doing. 1-1 one, one can grow with the help of Hadana's Climb. So, Negate, Canopy, Frilled Mystic. Taking out Duplicate. I could, I could see keeping Dive Down in this matchup. They have more targeted removal than what Simic does. Hmm. I don't know what Sprouting Renewal is. So I don't have any thoughts on Sprouting Renewal. I don't know what that is. So our opponent's biogenic uses could certainly be trouble. Last time, whenever we played Simic, I went no dive downs and two ooze. This is what I did last time against Simic. But against them with having like red removal, I may want dive down. Instead, could get outclassed by their biogenic ooze, though. It's a thing to be scared of, but we have Krasis that can fly over it. I just hope we out outramp them. Hey, what's up, Jelly? Yeah, this. Yeah, I like this Vanifar avatar for sure. Hey, Yager. Happy Thursday. Yeah, 
And two nails is here. I'm not going to hold up the dive down immediately, like sitting there on turn two. I'll, I'll get the point in. It'd be pretty obvious that something's up if I just... Um, if I would just go with that. Let's see. I think here I'm likely going to want to activate the Incubation Druid. Which maybe I just... Maybe I should just be doing that on my on my turn. So it's not like we need to frill mystic or anything, but now letting them have the red mana means they can just shiv and fire my incubation druid in response. Mm. Played that really bad. Not punished though. This is Vanifar. You know, like Prime Speaker Vanifar. So do I want to attack her four again? Put them down to nine. Or I could just or I could not attack and have these just play incubation druid branch walker. I guess I could just play wow growth plus branch walker, I guess. So they're at four cards. I hate whenever as Kant is on top, you can't check the graveyard. Makes it really difficult to at least. But it said I think it said yeah, it said four there. There we go. Yeah, that says four. Down to two. Drawing a Jade Light would have been lethal. Did not. That's all right. Hopefully, we can finish them off from here. We're gonna have to have a crazy hand with Nexus of Fates here to to finish us off. Only one card left. They're not able to flip Ascanta still. They're at five cards there. Now it's six.
So here comes an explosion, which we can dive down. No, they're exploding us. So they need to draw a fog. Do they have fogs in their deck? I mean, I guess we'll find out. Wow. Yep. All right, we need another counter spell here. Nope. Ugh. Yeah, so they're going to have to have an incredible hand there with those last two cards, and certainly looks like they did. Last two cards being... Uh, explosion and Nexus. I think, I think we're just dead now, right? We get three Ascant activations a turn. Yeah, I don't think we can. I don't think we can win anymore. Incredible. So four and two ended up short of the. Oh, I don't. I don't think our opponent can can brick anymore. Like they're seeing, like they have thirty cards, and they're seeing twelve each extra turn. At at minimum, twelve just with Ascanta, besides their draw step, and then any other card draw they play, they can't just not find any Nexus of Fates. It's just not, it's not possible. Yeah, if we if we just never quit, that's exactly exactly true. We would just be sitting there for another fifteen minutes, at least ten minutes, waiting for the game to end, but. The game's over. All right, so that's Quasi Dupla Ooze. Uh, first time in a long time not getting five wins with the deck. But we had some. We had quite a few. I don't know. We didn't draw real well in like those games that we're losing. You know, like we were starting off strong all the time, and that's that's some of the the power of the deck. I really like how this deck starts with having the six mana creatures and all the explore creatures and everything, we were starting off strong. It was just whether, like against control, if we could you know, actually draw Krasis or Vivian or not. Um, and uh, a lot of times, we just had you know, a lot of games in a row there against control, I guess like three in a row, where we went through half of our deck and only found one Krasis and, and half of our deck and just couldn't find like that second Krasis to really chain it together or of course find a Vivian to stick. Um, and then yeah we just kind of you know we, we played against Nexus twice we won one against Nexus that's pretty decent our game one isn't isn't great against Nexus uh, you know we're we're kind of deck that can uh, gum up the ground really well with Biogenic Ooze and we're good against we're really good against aggro decks with the help of Wild Growth Walker and the Explorer Creatures Biogenic Ooze and with Hydroid Crisis. So that's like really what we're strong against. Um, so like Nexus is something tough for us, but that's what we have our sideboard for. You know, we have all those negates, frilled mystics, crushing canopies in the sideboard for that. And uh, we drew two sideboard cards. We drew one negate, one frilled mystic that last game, but it was just one sideboard court card short. We just had like one more, you know, like one crushing canopy for the Escanta or one more counter spell. You know, we, we get there, but... Uh, came real close. Opponent had awesome hands. So, still a solid deck and one I like quite a bit. I could see potentially trimming one Kral Harpooner from the sideboard for another Furled Mystic or Negate for the control and Nexus matchups. If we want an extra counter spell on the sideboard, we could probably get away with just two harpooners for mono blue i think we're probably going to be just fine against mono blue even with two instead of three 
So that could be something to change for, for next time. And maybe maybe that means we add in another negate because negate is good against mono blue also. So that's that is a downgrade, of course, against mono blue, but not like a huge downgrade. But then that helps us out more, you know, gives us another counter spell to have against control and nexus. This is of course also just a pretty small sample. You know, we went one and one against control and against uh, Esper control, and then one and one against Nexus here in this league. And you know, that's a pretty small sample. Overall, we've been having good success against those decks uh, previously with Quasi Dupla Ooze. Spell Pierce is not good. I don't. I don't like the card. I, I would want a. I want my counter spell to actually counter a spell. I, I don't like Spell Pierce at all. Disdainful Stroke is, is another option. That one actually counters spells, but I like Negate more. But there we go. So that's Quasi Deep Blues. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. But thanks for watching, and I will see you back for the next video.